The crypto market has been in crazy trouble for the best part of an entire year now at this point. Millions have invested into the markets and millions have lost everything to outright scams, some to some frauds and failures like Luna Terra and that entire project, others to some investors who've just been gambling with client money like Three Arrows Capital or Celsius. We have though had a little bit of quiet time with the crypto markets for the last few months really since Celsius collapsed not a lot has happened in the industry as a whole. Bitcoin and Ethereum and most altcoins prices haven't really been changing going up or down by all that much. This led many people to believe that this was really the bottom of this crypto bear market because there was just too much support for these assets at these prices and then it can't possibly go lower than it currently was. That entire idea though changed entirely over the last few days. FTX, the second largest crypto exchange in the entire world and one of the biggest crypto and decentralized finance companies in the entire world just collapsed. This is a pretty insane story with even more insane consequences as well. I'll cover everything and more today as we look at the crypto market crash that has just gotten so much worse. Now you have to forgive me here because sadly this is actually a very long story and it starts just over a year ago with Binance being the number one crypto market in the entire world and a very blue chip company, old and established and trusted by most people. Now FTX was a fair bit newer, only a few years old but it had exploded onto the scene very quickly and seen some pretty incredible growth and risen to the level of number two. Now CZ is the founder of Binance and Sam Bankman-Fried or SBF is the founder of FTX but they haven't really seemed to have got on for a while. SBF is American and he's tried to portray FTX as this institutional safe Google or Microsoft equivalent to the crypto industry whereas CZ is Chinese and he started out creating this company in China where crypto is entirely illegal so there's always been a lot of doubts around the legitimacy of that company there as well. They've had a few arguments over the years but actually Binance invested into FTX but that harmony just didn't last. About a week ago we started to get rumors of a liquidity problem in FTX. X. Dirty Bubble Media, who were the firm that actually predicted the Celsius crash in the first place, reported that FTX, or actually as you can read, Alamada Research, which is just a subsidiary of FTX, apparently had loads of assets, $14.6 billion worth, but about $12 billion in liabilities. Another problem with this fact is that lots of FTX's assets are actually locked up so they're not liquid at all for months or even years into the future and they technically have more assets than their debts at least according to their own books but that was in a token called FTT which is FTX's native cryptocurrency token and this news came out just over a week ago. Now the reason this is so dangerous is because if that specific crypto FTT loses a lot of its value then FTX would then go bankrupt and default on its debts and because because FTT is the native cryptocurrency to FTX, when the company collapses, the crypto would then collapse even more. So you can very easily see how a death spiral could occur with the company and the crypto losing all of their value together. Now we then started to get a lot of rumors surrounding this about the imminent collapse of FTX, but some people came out to fight on their side and tell everyone that it was all okay, including this person here, Caroline Capital, who has worked with FTX for a while now, and she claims that this idea misses another $10 billion of assets that they secretly have on other books, so really everything is fine. Sam Bankman-Fried himself also heard these rumors and came out to try and quiet everything down with this Twitter thread here. As you can see, he claims they are a bunch of unfounded rumors and that FTX is fully audited and he makes a bunch of other claims about its security as well. This wasn't exactly too reassuring though because we've seen plenty of other crypto firms say the exact same thing right before they collapse, the most notable example being Celsius just a few months ago. Now before we continue with that though, a quick word from this video sponsor, me. No, but seriously, I would just like to give everyone a quick update about our off uh, YouTube system called Stoic Financial Freedom, our private investor community, and our brand new exclusive course. Now, we had been running on Patreon for about a year now, but we've moved on over to an independent platform that does not censor people and cancel them when they say the wrong thing. Also, we're massively revamping this entire system as well. We've already completed 17 completely private lessons explaining all the juicy stuff that we would love to say here on YouTube but would frankly get me demonetized, deleted and cancelled by YouTube themselves. The World Economic Forum, the truth about central bank digital currencies, everything like that and everything in between it as well. 
On top of this, we're also going to be adding brand new courses to this system every single month. And those who join the community can go and vote on which new lessons you want to be made. With this page, you can see behind me here. Then you also get direct access to me, myself with messages, uh, buy and sell alerts for my personal investments and a bunch of benefits within the community itself. As of right now, we are running a pre-sale for November only for 60% off to gauge exactly which lessons you want in the future. But we're only offering one place every day. So I get a chance to chat to every new member so you really do need to be quick if you want to if that's interesting then go and click the links down below in the description the support you've personally shown me over the duration of this channel is insane and i really do appreciate it more than you know and as always make sure to stay stoic and back to the video now it's at this point that CZ, again the founder of Binance, comes out and tweets this. As part of Binance's exit from FTX equity last year, Binance received roughly 2.1 billion US dollars equivalent in cash. Due to recent revelations that have come to light, we have decided to liquidate any remaining FTT on our books. Basically, he's saying that Binance is going to sell their billions of dollars worth of FTT tokens, which is the stuff that backs up the exchange FTX itself. This will mean billions of these tokens flood in the market and the FTT token will crash in price. SBF knows immediately that this is a massive problem, so he contacts CZ privately and tries to buy all of these tokens off market to protect the price, but Binance just outright refuse. As this happens, the FTT price crashes from about $22 per token down to $4 per token, a drop of about 82% over one single day. This basically means that FTX's assets are now worth 82% less and suddenly they have a multi-billion dollar black hole in their balance sheet. It's at this point that FTX then freezes all withdrawals so no customers can take any of their assets out at all because FTX don't have the money to pay them back so a bank run has essentially now happened at this point. FTX also goes mostly silent and they don't really say anything, they stop tweeting anything, they just take people's money and they disappear which is very worrying so the FTT token continues to crash. We then start to get rumors that FTX is looking for investors or some capital to try and save itself from this collapse. They start going around Silicon Valley. They ask all the big venture capital firms, the big investors, literally everything because they need billions of dollars of cash to survive. Quite frankly, though, they're just having no luck at all. Crypto is crashing. All these crypto firms look insanely risky. And the monetary environment today is totally different to how it was a year ago. So frankly, no one wants to invest in this company, except for maybe one competitor. Now here is where this story gets really crazy. Binance then announced that they are buying FTX entirely. Yes, the company which crashed an asset that then bankrupted this company was then saying they were going to buy this very same company out. Now, this didn't just come out of Binance itself. Sam Bankman Fried came out with a tweet very similar to this one you can see behind me here, announcing the deal as well, subject to due diligence. This seemed like very good news. Binance supposedly have the cash on hand to save FTX from this collapse and they buy them out. And so investors don't lose money and the crypto market survives. But the bad idea here is about monopoly fears. The biggest exchange in the world buying the second biggest exchange in the world. But frankly, what was the alternative? About 20 to $30 billion in investor capital was lost in a massive crypto fraud once again. So most people were happy with this news. As it turned out though, this was all too good to be true. Binance actually got a look at the books of FTX and they decided that it was far worse than FTX had claimed and they backed out of the deal. We got this tweet here from Binance itself to announce it. And so this is obviously not good news for FTX. Of course, Binance were the only real buyer at this point, and that was based on the information that FTX was giving out to investors. And we know that once Binance saw the real books, they decided it was actually so much worse and they didn't want anything to do with it. So they backed out. So this is incredibly bad news for the crypto market as a whole, for investors and for FTX. Right now, as we speak, FTX is once again looking for capital and investors, but it's very unlikely that they find any. This tweet behind me here is a private message sent out to FTX employees from Sam Bankman-Fried, the founder, and it's very long, but it basically says just that. There is probably a $10 billion plus black hole that needs filling at a time when all investors are already losing money in traditional financial markets and the crypto market is likely to get even worse. 
Now to make the entire story just a little bit more crazy, the likely cause of this collapse is FTX gambling with its users assets on the crypto market. And at this point, it just seems a foregone conclusion that FTX is dead. The talk in the markets is that FTX's debt is so great that they are now only worth $1 or in some cases, even less than that. Sequoia Capital, which is one of the biggest names in Silicon Valley, value their stake in FTX now at literally zero dollars. And it's also worth noting that Sam Bankman Fried is bankrupt personally too, as he had personal loans of maybe 600 million US dollars compared to his assets, which are basically just FTX and FTT tokens, which are currently worth practically nothing. Sam Bankman Fried went from being one of the youngest billionaires in the world to worse than broke over the course of one week. And at this point, he's probably going to get sued and will likely end up in jail for fraud as well. So that's the actual story. That's the simple truth of what has happened so far. But what should we make of everything I've just said? Well, many people right now are drawing parallels between FTX and Celsius, the other big crypto crash we've had this year, or at least one of them, and for good reason. Both were American companies run by established names with real officers, and they were supposed to be the blue chip companies and the safest companies in this crypto space. Both, however, were secretly gambling with their customers' assets behind the scenes to try and generate a profit, which was only possible because regulation in the crypto space is practically zero compared to traditional financial markets. Both of these companies claimed that they were fully legitimate right up until the end, and then both collapsed in spectacular fashion, taking down the rest of the crypto markets with them. We've of course seen other similar collapses over this year just like this with things like Luna Terra and with Three Arrows Capital, which were very similar but slightly different. We've also seen some other smaller firms crash just like this too, but on a far smaller scale than that of FTX right now. Billions of dollars has just been lost due to this FTX collapse, the majority of which comes out of the pockets of ordinary people like you and I. Now, for those of you who used FTX or who had their assets there, you're going to be asking the very simple question, is your money safe? And honestly, the answer is probably not. It's most likely gone. Yes, the US government is obviously going to get involved here. They will probably arrest and charge these guys, but they literally have no money here to give back. So there's no real recourse and a bailout is incredibly unlikely. Maybe some of these assets will be returned, but even something like 20% of your assets is a little bit optimistic. I do want to point out very quickly that this isn't the end of the world if you have lost money here, even if it's a substantial amount. We've seen lots of news about uh, suicides from the Luna and Celsius collapse so far this year. And if you're in that position, go and get some help. Realize that money and losing money isn't the end of the world and there are always some options available to you. There is a fundamental problem for the entire crypto market from this crash though that many people aren't talking about. And that's that because of the size of FTX, because they were so dominant in the market, they were saving other crypto companies and the market itself when this crash was undergoing. Over the last year, when Bitcoin's price would crash, FTX would then buy up loads of Bitcoin to stop that crash. When smaller firms went out of business and collapsed, FTX would then buy them up to repay their customers and increase their market share. That day of support from FTX is over. And as it seems right now, institutional support for crypto is dead or dying. So crypto markets are going to be far more volatile and dangerous in the short future. This means the crypto bear market will probably be a longer one as well. And so if you do still have your money in cryptocurrency, be very careful, be careful of where it's stored and also aware that the coins you hold are probably going to decrease in value as well. Now, since this whole saga started, crypto prices have obviously been crashing all over. We've seen low prices for months now. In June, Bitcoin fell to around about the $20,000 mark and Ethereum fell to about the $1,200 mark. And we haven't seen much movement from those levels in months. Bitcoin has touched 18,000 and up to 24,000 a couple of times, but it's been sitting pretty around $20,000. This changed everything though and confidence in the crypto markets has been massively shaken with assets falling in price. Bitcoin right now is sitting at about 16,000 US dollars at the time I make this video or about a 25% decline from a month ago. 
That's also a 75% decline from its all-time high. FTT, the native token of FTX, is down to about $2 right now, down from $26 a month ago, and about $80 at its all-time high, which is a 98% collapse in its value. Ethereum is close to about $1,200, down from about $1,600 a week ago, so a 25% drop. And then for Solana, for ADA, for Dogecoin, all of these other altcoins, most of them are down somewhere in the region of 20, 30 or 40 percent over the last week. Now, some people will be left wondering why are seemingly unrelated coins are losing value. And the simple truth is that everyone thought these bank runs that we saw with Celsius were over and that there were only very solid crypto companies left. Coinbase and FTX and Binance being some of the more blue chip companies that are supposed to not gamble with your cryptocurrency. But now it seems that the entire market is no longer safe in the market's eyes. A brilliant example of this is Coinbase itself, whose corporate bonds are currently trading at down 35% with yields of 14% for a corporate bond that's really high. And that's how dangerous investors think these bonds are now. As for Coinbase's stock, which was another blue chip US crypto company trading on American markets after their IPO in 2021, well, they're at about $45 per share right now. Their all-time high was just over $400. So they've seen 90% losses in just over a year, a 40% loss in just over a month, and a 23% loss over the last week alone. All in all, there's probably been a loss of $200 billion in the crypto sphere over the last few days, which is absolutely insane. But also we've seen losses across the rest of the traditional financial markets as well. The S&P 500 has fallen 2% since this news came out, although it probably isn't entirely based on this news and the Nasdaq has lost about 3%. So for those markets, maybe another 600 billion US dollars has been lost over that same time period. But again, it's pretty much impossible to say whether or not this was caused by the crypto market turmoil itself. This has been a very crazy week for crypto. And as I've said over the entirety of the last year, the crypto markets will just continue to get worse as they have in real time. These crashes will keep happening and these coins will keep falling in value, but I am determined to ensure that you will stay up to date and know exactly what is happening. On one final note, make sure to go and check out the link down below in the description for Stoic Financial Freedom if you're interested by that and join other Stoic Finance subscribers. I'm seriously excited to see you there. And so until next time, stay Stoic.